how do we envision an economic component to reparations that takes into account that our economy, uh, for example, this week, the, the new Fortune 500 report came out, and the Fortune 500 companies had record earnings, but they have flat hiring practices. And the rationale is, well, we're saving money for a rainy day. And yet, if there's no consumers who can actually purchase goods, then the rainy day is definitely going to come. So all of this makes me wonder how this framework of, of talking about justice, including economic justice for African Americans, works in a country where even white Americans are not particularly getting a fair shake in the labor market. Well, I, I think, again, the thing to understand is um, you, you don't raise, I mean, hopefully not, you don't raise the issue of reparations thinking that you know, this is going to get taken up next year, you know, next, next, uh, next congressional, congressional cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't even, you know, raise it, you know, even believing, you know, that you might even see it in your lifetime. You know, if you, you know, gave me a true sense, you said, ta do you think there's going to be reparations? Before? No, I don't. I don't. You know, and I, and I think I have to, you know, talk like that. And I think it's very, very important to talk like that. Because only in talking like that do people get the severity of the situation. You outline the problem and then you say, you know, not only that, we don't even seem like we're prepared to deal with it right now. Um, for me, reparations does not stand um, by, by itself. In other words, it's not just an issue, as, as I say, you know, as, as I've argued, uh, it's not just an argument for the prompt destruction of, of white supremacy, you know, the total destruction of white supremacy. It is that, but it's also an argument uh, for a, a very, very different America um, and a very, very different, you know, notion of, of patriotism and, and self-love. The example I always give is I'm married. I have a very, very beautiful wife. My wife loves me. Uh, for right now, um, but, but, but my wife's love is not based on my total perfection. You know, uh, my wife could tell you, you know, uh, 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 numerous stories about my many flaws. You know, uh, my wife does not have a, you know, a, 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 a rose-colored view of me. She does not, you know, love me because I am perfect. Um, she loves me, you know, and says, you know, he does this right, he does this wrong, you know. But on the whole, you know, this is a guy I want to be with. You know. Um, my hope is that people can learn to feel about their country in the same way. You know, um, I, you know, I have a son who I love very much, and I love him in that sort of way. I have a dad, mom, and they love me in, in, in that sort of way. And, and love is not um, a situation in which uh, you tell people what they want to hear all the time. You know what I mean? You don't, you know, so this sort of idea that, that, that patriotism or love of your country is America is always right. You know, my country, right, you know, right or wrong. Um, and especially galling, you know, like if you, you know, you see this in this country, you know, where people, you know, go around waving a Confederate flag, claiming to be the most patriotic, you know, people in this country. I, you know, I am arguing, you know, for a, a deeper conversation in which we see ourselves as we are. And I think, I think the bounty of that, should we ever get there, extends way, way beyond reparations. Uh, the, the issue that I think of all the time is climate change, uh, because I think it's eminently relatable. Um, here you have a situation in which uh, we are going to destroy ourselves. Unless we can see past our immediate interests that are right in front of our face, uh, climate change is very much about the natural history of you know of, of the earth. You know, not just about you know uh, the country. It's about things that we've actually done, and can we face up to things that we've actually done, and can we face the cost, the consequence of having to deal with you know things that we've actually done uh, in order to you know save ourselves, save the world, you know, for, for our children. And I, I don't think those questions are, are much different than the question of reparations. They both involve being able to see yourself as you are, you know, love yourself in spite of it, and, and in that love, then go and do the right thing. Um, so I would argue that a world in which, you know, uh, America is able to look at itself, you know, honestly, straight up, which is the world that, you know, in which re reparations could happen, um, the bounty extends way, way, way beyond that. Yeah, yeah.